Hi, this is Rick, Vintage Oddball Cards. Hope everyone's doing well out there. All right, I just saw all the Strongsville videos. No one invited me. The mayor didn't invite me in Strongsville. No one invited me. All my peers are there. Vintage, pre-war. I mean, what can you ask for? I wasn't invited. So next year, I'm going to invite myself, Mayor of Strongville. I'm coming. Even if I don't get that invite, I will be there. Because I can't miss out on something like that. Are you kidding me? All right. Now, my contest. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but look at my last video. We're trying to stump John Mangini. Videos are due by the end of the month. You're going to one winner, $100 gift card. I'm sure a lot of you have seen some of the videos. Check out my last video for uh, information about that. Um, today, I received a couple photos in the mail. Fantastic photos. So I thought, you know what? Along with these photos, why don't I show... It's One of them is a Babe Ruth photo. The other, Joe Jackson... And why don't I show you my only Joe Jackson card? And I could kick myself if I could. I should have picked up a Joe Jackson card years ago. But even years ago, they were, to me, expensive. So I never picked one up, whether it be a strip card of one of his other cards. But uh, at least I have one Joe Jackson card plain day card in my collection. So a little thing, a little bit before I show you this photo of Joe Jackson in the card. So little things that you might not know about Joe Jackson is, uh, you know, he was working in the cotton mills even at the age six years old. So definitely was not educated. Didn't have a chance to be educated because his family needed him to work. But he was definitely not unintelligent. And uh, he owned many businesses, uh, even as a player. And after he was a player, after he was kicked out. So he was a pretty successful businessman. And some of the business he owned when he was playing, well, he owned a pool hall. He owned a cigar shop. And uh, he had an endorsement deal, one of the first endorsement deals uh, with Louisville Slugger, one of the first players to have an endorsement deal with the uh, back company. Um, always dressed nicely, owned multiple homes, uh, made decent money, not only from his playing days when he was playing, but also owning the businesses. So uh, his wife did, I uh, read most of the, his book work, you know, because he wasn't educated. And uh, so they were a good team. And uh, so the vo photo I want to show you is uh, is him later in his life, after he was kicked out of baseball, he owned a laundry, dry cleaning, laundry service company. And uh, in the 1940s, owned a liquor store. And there's a famous photo of him um, behind the counter um, at his liquor store. And uh, I have a photo uh, I recently picked up um, of him. This is probably mid to late 40s. He passed away in 19, I believe, 1951. And I believe this is him in front of his liquor store. And he always dressed nicely with the hat. And uh, just a very sweet photo of Joe Jackson. Um, I kind of like it because it's the size of a baseball card. I see what the back looks like here, but a type one photo. And... Uh, Heck, if you can't afford his a plain day photo, a plain day photo is probably minimum three thousand dollars and on up. Um, I mean, just crazy. Anything Joe Jackson sells, so I'm glad at least I have something a photo of him in my collection. Um, another photo. Let me before I get to the card. Let me show you this other photo. I should have probably shown it first. Uh, this was also a photo I picked up um, in an auction. Um, it's uh, Babe Ruth here. 
And uh, this is a very common photo, probably 1934 spring training, Florida. Uh, he's wearing his sweat uh, shirt here, most likely wearing his sweat pants. I mean, what sweat pants? His baseball pants. Uh, took many photos off the side of uh, you know fans. These are two girls. Um, I don't think they're his daughters, um, uh, but probably a 1934 Type One photo. The clarity is not there, but a recent in REA auction they had a postcard. And standing pretty much about the same spot, he's with a, a gentleman, uh, another fan, and uh, it was a postcard. And it went for, to me, kind of crazy money, um, being that I probably purchased this, uh, you know, it's probably three times less than uh, what the postcard went for. And uh, I'd rather have this, this type one photo. So you can see kind of what it looks like. But anyway... Anything Babe Ruth, I'm all in. And if I can, if, you know, this wasn't that expensive. So got that also. Now the card I have um, is the only card I have is this 1913 National Game card. And I've shown this before. And one, I this is probably I picked it up like three years ago. Something back then I could afford, even though it's, Obviously a high grade here, but even this card from three years, three years ago to now has doubled in price. And uh, his cards, you know, unless it's run over by a Mack truck back and forth, uh, a total beater, you know, a total beater is you're, you're talking a couple thousand dollars and anything decent, 5,000 on up. And uh, you pretty much need to take a second mortgage out to uh, afford nowadays a Joe Jackson card. And like I said, I could kick myself for not picking up one years ago. But, uh, you know, heck, years ago I didn't have that kind of money. And to me, they were pretty expensive years ago. So really happy to own this, um, this card. Now, I want to show you one other card that I've owned for a while now. And I, th I think I showed this on one of my videos, uh, but kind of relates to the Black Sox, and that's uh, a Buck Weaver here. He was the third baseman, one of the players, one of the eight to be kicked out. It's a shame because he um, he batted 324 in the series, 11 hits, and his uh, his crime was he didn't turn his friends, the other players, in because he, he knew the the fix was on. And uh, any photo of him, any magazine or any photo I've seen, he's always had a smile on his face. And uh, it's just kind of a shame because he loved baseball. Tried to reapply to be reinstated six different times. Even his nieces after he passed away up to the 1990s tried to get him reinstated. And, uh, you know, there was players like Hal Chase cheated on baseball back then. People knew he cheated. Players didn't turn him in. Heck, I think even Charles Kaminsky knew the fix was in by game one and, uh, you know, didn't do anything about it. So he was basically an example, kicked out of the league, played semi-pro ball for years in Chicago um, area, um, had different kind of jobs where Joe Jackson was pretty successful businessman. You know, um, Buck Weaver here, minor league card, San Francisco, the famous San Francisco Seals, 1911. Um, batted, I think, uh, says here 289 on the back here and was called up the next year. Fantastic defensive player. Um, I read somewhere where that Ty Cobb would never bunt when he was at third base, but down the third base line. So um, a lot of respect uh, Ty Cobb had for Buck Weaver. And uh, anyway, um, hey, I'm at nine minutes. Uh, I have 
a be a total beater coming in the mail. Literally, it's been been authenticated. It's on the way back. I mean, a beater of an expensive Ty Cobb card. And uh, look forward, happy. Look forward to show it. I just laugh because I, you know, I bitch and moan about what people pay for um, some of these modern cards nowadays. And a modern collector is going to see this card and they go, what the bleep did somebody pay that much for a three-hold Ty Cobb card? But it's, uh, anyway, I'll probably show that on the next video. Hey, get those videos in my contest. And thanks for watching. This is Rick, Vintage Oddball Cards. Bye.